Hello everyone. This evening we are doing Judges chapter 16. Dear Lord, be with us as we read this word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Judges chapter 16. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw a prostitute there and went into her. Samson, Samson, Samson. Okay, verse 2. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. So they surrounded the place and waited all night at the gate of the city to ambush him. And they kept quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it's light, we will kill him. But Samson lay resting until midnight. Then at midnight he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two door posts and pulled them up, security, I'm sorry, and pulled them up like security bars and all and he put them on his shoulder and carried them up to the top of the hill, which is opposite Hebron. After this, he fell in love with a Philistine woman living in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now, wasn't he just killing the Philistines a minute ago? He, like, killed, like, a thousand of them. Moving on. And I could be wrong, because I kind of lose track as I'm reading. But if you agree, let me know. So after this, he fell in love with a Philistine woman living in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So the five lords, the governors of the Philistines, came to her and said to her, Persuade him and see where his great strength lies and find out how we may overpower him so that we may bind him to subdue him. And each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound and subdued. Now, if you remember correctly, the last wife he had, and I, I hate going back because I wish I could remember um, the one that got was burned in the fire with his father. Um, she was begging him to, I guess, tell him the strengths Anyways, we're going back to the story. Um, so, yes. <clears throat> Verse 6. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound and subdued. Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh cords, tendons, that have not been dried, then I will be weak and be like any other man. Then the Philistine lords brought her seven fresh cords that had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now she had men lying in ambush in an inner room, and she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he broke the cords as a string of toe breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his, secret, his strength was not discovered. So he lied to her. Then Delilah said to Samson, See now, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now please tell me, truthfully, how you may be bound. And he said to her, If they bind me tightly with new ropes that have not been used, then I will become weak and be like any other man. He kind of sounds like a jokester. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in the inner room, but he snapped the ropes off his arm like sewing thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me truthfully with what you may be bound. And he said to her, If you weave the seven braids of my hair with the web and fasten it with a pin, then I will become weak and be like any other man. I think he's really playing with her. So, while he slept... Delilah took the seven lock braids of his hair and wove them into the web and she fastened it with the pin of the loom and said to him the Philistines are upon you Samson and he awoke from his sleep and pulled out the pin of the of the weavers loom and the web then she said to him how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me and you have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies now, remember, she, this is just like the Jezebel spirit in, in the book of Proverbs. So men, we have got to be careful with the women that we're associating with um, because like a lion, a roaring lion just waiting to catch you off guard. 
So, um, here we go. Verse, um, I think we're in 16. When she pursued him day after day with her words and pleaded with him, he was annoyed to death. Then, annoyed to death. That's rough. Then finally, he told her everything that was in his heart and said to her, A razor has never been used on my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaved, then my strength will leave me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. Then Delilah realized that he had told her everything in his heart. So she sent and called for the Philistines' lords, saying, Come up this once, because he has told me everything in, the, in his heart. Then the Philistine lords came up to her and brought the money they had promised in their hands. And this is a perfect example that we cannot trust anybody but the Father. That's why he wants us to keep our mouths shut. Anyways, moving on. She made Samson sleep on her knees. And she called a man and had him shave off the seven braids of his head. And then she began to abuse Samson and his strength left him. That is so sad. So she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as I have time and time and time, and time again and shake myself free. For Samson did not know that the Lord had departed from him. That probably is... You know those feelings, huh? When the Lord, when you feel like you're all alone and you have no strength in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> it's so difficult to even open the Bible. I've been there. Um, and you know, giving his whole heart, because I'm sure he really, really loved Delilah. And um, him giving up that secret. It's crazy. Verse 21. Then the Philistine seized him and gouged out his eyes. Oh, poor eyeballs. And they brought him down to Gaza and bought him and bound him with two bronze chains. And he was forced to be a grinder of grain into flour at the mill in the prison. But the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved off. Now the Philistine lords gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to celebrate. For they said, Our God has given Samson our enemy into our hands our God oh wait when verse 24 when the people saw Samson they praised their God for they said our God has handed over our enemy to us the ravager of our country who has killed many of us and next time maybe I can post a, a picture of uh, the God Dagon each of my family members actually did a picture of Dagon that we had found on Google and um, drew our own little pictures of him. So if I can find those, I will show you what it looks, what he looks like, what it looks like. Okay. Now, when they were in high spirits, they said, "Call for Samson, so that he may ab amuse amuse us." So they called Samson out of the prison, and he entertained them, and they made him stand between the pillars. Then Samson said to the boy who held him by the hand, "Let me feel the pillars on which the roof of the house rests." so that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the Philistine lords were there, and on the flat roof were about 3,000 men and women who looked on, on while Samson was entertaining them. Do you think that Samson had that thought about, man, I should have listened to my parents? <laughs> Verse 28. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me just this one time. O God, and let me take vengeance on the Philistines for the for my two eyes. And I guess this is better not to focus on what the what his parents said, because he's a grown man now, but he's actually turning to the father, which is a beautiful thing. So verse twenty nine. So Samson took hold of his two middle support pillars on which the house rested, and braced himself against them, one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he stretched out with all his strength, with all his might, collapsing the support pillars. And the house fell on the lords and on all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he had killed during his life. Then his brother and his father's entire tribal household came down, took him and brought him up. And they buried him in the tomb of Manoah, his father, 
which was between Zorah and Eshtaol. So Samson had judged Israel for 20 years. Praise him and praise the Lord. Um, 20 years. It's a long time. So anyways, I pray that you guys are doing well and you can visit with me tomorrow. Amen. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.